now. Hello, everybody. Hello. Good morning. Hello. Howdy. So the first thing on the agenda is announcements. Anybody got anything? We have a new chair for the fundraising committee. That's Todd a great is, announcement. Yeah, Todd, Todd is now our chair for the fundraising committee. Thank you, Todd. You're welcome. I made it easy to volunteer. And, and then our other announcement is the conference location. Yes. So we will be having the conference in Pueblo, Colorado this year, September 18th through the 21st. I'll be sending out an email right after this meeting as well as posting it on the website with uh, some information. We did come up with a theme for the conference. And I have too many tabs open. There it is. Uh, patron power, enable your users. So. As far as the voting went, so went on the conference uh, selection, it was like uh, hands down Pueblo. It was like uh, almost twice as many votes as the next location. Um, I think, you know, is anybody here from Round Rock? I don't see, I don't see if Rhonda's is here. I think what, what, what really happened is that uh, I think if uh, there had only been one location in Texas, we'd probably be in Texas. But I think the having two locations in Texas kind of split the Texas vote. Um, and then Lawrence was, was in there too and, and Athens. But it was, you know, a lot of people voted. Um, a lot of people joined so that they could vote. Uh, so we managed to do what, what I was, one of the things I was hoping to do is uh, we managed to get the conference set east of the Continental Divide. Of course, it's only like 50 yards east of the Continental Divide, <laughs> um, but we are, you know, on the eastern side of the Rockies uh, for the first time since Erie, Pennsylvania. So. So I think that's pretty pretty cool. Um, uh, next year, maybe we can shoot a little further east and maybe, I don't know, make it to a state that was added uh, before the Civil War. <laughs> um, well, there's a nice library in Lubeck, Maine, but I'm not sure they run Kawa. Or Delaware was the first state, wasn't it? Uh, but uh, anyway, we are east of the continental divide for the first time in, in five years. So, so that'll be fun. Uh, uh, I'm looking forward to the conference, uh, uh, especially now that we have a theme and, and everybody on the conference committee did such a great job uh, yesterday with, you know, at least that's what they told me when I got there an hour late. <laughs> Any other announcements? Looks like I'm the only one here that appears to be a regular acquisitions user, or at least admits to being one. Oh yeah. The very first Koha acquisitions group, which had its origins at last year's Portland, Oregon KohaCon, met for the first time about a week and a half ago. And unfortunately, I was unable to attend the meeting, but one of the things that was set up was a Google group, uh, independent of the Koha US Google Suite implementation, and uh, it's started a bit of review of some of the bugs in Bugzilla. Uh, people are starting to get coordinated about things because before it was really kind of very loosely based, and even going back to my first conference in Coeur d'Alene, um, I spoke about some of the things I didn't like about acquisitions, and there was lots of head nodding, but that's as far as that ever got. Now there's a little bit more of a concerted effort to review things that really bug us about acquisitions uh, to the point where people are throwing votes in the bug reporting mechanism towards the fact that they would like to see things either developed or even possibly considered bugs and have them resolved. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the future meeting schedule is for this group, but it was uh, relatively well attended. 
um, I believe there were maybe about 12 of us in Portland last year. And there's been a little bit of discussion in that uh, Google group, which generates its own uh, email list, much like the various Koha US lists do. So that was great to be able to get that started. <clears throat> and uh, even though I was unable to attend, my thanks to those that took the initiative based on our discussions in Portland and got that off the ground. Can you put a link to that Google group so I can send it to our acquisitions folks? I will see if I can find it, Ed, and I will post it in the group chat. Cool. Anything else going on that people want to talk about uh, in the announcements phase? Is anyone here going to be attending the, um, hey Marty, is anyone here going to be attending the um, Koha Con 2019? No. Ed's making the, we need money to do that gesture, yeah. which. So I'm, I'm going to be attending and I'm going to be speaking on behalf of fundraising in general, but I will be speaking about Koha US and, um, you know, what we've been working towards in uh, our organizational development. And, um, and, and, and so I just, if anybody has anything that they would like me to include, please feel free to email me. I'd be happy to try to work that into my presentation. I would, on the one hand, it would be fun to go to another Koha Con. It would be particularly fun to go to Ireland, but uh, it's expensive to go, and um, I actually don't even have a passport. And I think if I were to start that process today, I would get one right just in time to miss the whole thing. Uh, so that's one of the issues for me. And I'm also thinking in terms of, uh, of uh, holding off to go to New Zealand. You know, if I'm going to ask to go to a conference overseas, Ireland sounds cool, but New Zealand sounds really cool. Well, if you think that Ireland's expensive, wait till you travel to New Zealand. <laughs> I think any of them are expensive, and I have the additional burden of... Uh, you know, the last time uh, anybody from our office went to an international conference, it was the New Zealand conference, and they, while they were there, they took the opportunity to get a job and immigrate to New Zealand. So I'm not entirely sure my boss wants to fund another, another move to New Zealand. <laughs> um, I guess now that I think about it, I do have an announcement of my own. Uh, I, at the Koha Khan in uh, Portland, I was asked by Sher Avzal uh, if I would speak at the Pakistan uh, Koha Users Group, and that's coming up in a couple of weeks. I won't be going to pa Pakistan. Um, I'll just be doing it by Zoom, but that'll be, I think, the 26th and the 27th. Uh, and... I'm at a loss of what to speak about. He said, I'll just talk for 15 minutes about whatever he wants. Like, well, I don't really want to talk about anything. <laughs> Can I talk about cartoons and, you know, uh, 1950s uh, records and uh, things that, you know, I, I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. But, but Only if they're 1950s bibliographic records. <laughs> Hey, you're the president. You have to deal with the glory. Yeah, I'll figure out something to, I'll, I'll slap together some, something to talk about for 15, 20 minutes. But uh, I don't know, as, uh, I don't know what I'll be doing, but I'll be doing that. So any other, any other announcements or things coming up that people want to mention? Well, the next. With, uh, oh, I spoke. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, I spoke with uh, uh, Mark Stevens over at uh, Utah Valley University. They're coming on board in July with Koha. So there's another library in, in Utah. This one's a, another academic library. So now we have Westminster College and UVU. So that's good. They'll be bringing with them a pretty decent collection and, and, and they'll be bringing, you know, an academic point of view, which is good. It's Koha is primarily, you know, public libraries. I shouldn't say primarily, but, you know, the majority of the, of the users are public libraries. So it would be good to have an academic library. In. Cool. You should uh, talk them into coming to Colorado. 
I will. I'll talk to them about that. So I've got a few friends there. So cool. Yeah. I've got a question that kind of falls under announcements for John. Uh, how is the uh, membership letter going? Or uh, that might be better for fundraising committee. But uh, you said we've gotten one member that way at least, right? We are now up to two. Awesome. Uh, two members. Uh, today, this morning, was day nine. So we've sent out about 850 messages. On any given day, anywhere between 20 to 30% of them fail and come back as bounced. Um, the tracking statistics that are provided are probably a little bit suspect, not because of how they're collected, but because of the fact that most organization email programs now will probably automatically suspect anything coming in as spam. And I guess that it's, it's my belief that's the case because no sooner do I sit, hit the magic button to send that day's messages and within 10 seconds, 10 of them already say the email has been opened and that links within the message have been clicked. There's no way that would ever be possible. So it's my guess that uh, there are there are filters in place that may be preventing some of these from getting to their members. And we've, we do have that 20 to 30% failure rate, like I said, but then again, we are dealing with data that is about two years old. So we really shouldn't be maybe too incredibly surprised at that. Uh, I did just some very quick and dirty research Cold mailings like this usually only garner a one to 2% success rate anyway. So the fact that we really only have two people so far uh, was not really, oh my God, horrible. And we really didn't know what to expect anyway, not really having set any goals for this process other than to let people know that, uh, hey, we exist. You, know, you can come and uh, meet with us. You can do all sorts of good things. Um, I did hear back from one person who asked if institutional memberships were available, and I responded that right now we're only supporting individuals, but uh, multiple people are more than welcome from any given organization to join. And I had uh, one person contact me, contacting me, uh, saying that she, her organization does not support uh, professional memberships, and uh, but. She actually wrote yesterday, and I haven't had a chance to write her back yet, uh, but I, I will be in touch with her to say, no, this was actually just a, a, a hey, we're, we're here to go, uh, and we're here for you if, if you want to join us. So it'll be interesting to gather up these statistics as they continue. In fact, one of our new members actually has joined us today, Bob Benhoff down, at least on my screen here, he's on the lower part of the screen. So Hi, Bob. Uh, welcome to you, Bob, one of the two. Now that I think Welcome. about it, that responded to Hello. the mailing request. So that's continuing on, um, 50 messages a day. If I get auto replies saying that so-and-so is no longer with the organization, if a new person is provided, I'm putting those messages aside and they will go out. Those people will be contacted as part of day 19, which has very few people in it right now. There were just a few stragglers uh, in the list, so day 19 is not complete, and those people will get tacked on to the end. So more information as I get it, and next month I'll have a complete report, the board will get a complete report before that. Cool. Two new members isn't, isn't horrible. No, we're, we're doing good. We, we actually met, if you think about our budget, uh, we were hoping for 45 full year members and that's the number we are at right now. So, hooray. Cool. Uh, I, and I've only gotten one email from one of our libraries saying, what is this? Is this legit? Is this some kind of scam? What's going on with these guys? <sighs> so, and that was this morning, so. Uh, well, I guess uh, if that wraps up announcements, the next thing on the agenda is conference discussion, which we talked about a little bit, I talked about how the voting kind of went. Uh, uh, anything else to say there? I'm sure there's a lot to say there. Uh, well, we'll have proposal proposals for presentations. Those will open up in May. Uh, so if you think you're gonna wanna present, start thinking about that now. Um, we wanna get a jump on it. So if we need 
um, more time we've got it. And um, Jill is here today and such yesterday in our meeting that if you guys had any questions about Pueblo, um, she's here today if you wanted to ask about anything. Um, does anybody have any questions in regards to transportation to and from? Um, we can fly into Pueblo, I think, but we can also fly into Denver. Um, Colorado just, Springs. Yeah, Colorado Springs. Um, oh, yeah. I think probably for most people, it's just going to be transportation and, and possibly lodging at this point. Any remarks to that, Jill? I know you guys are just kind of working up to all this stuff. You did put some things in your presentation, but just curious what your thoughts were. I think Jill is, uh, is she the phone icon? Yeah. Let me make sure she's unmuted in case she's talking. Okay, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't know how to so, unmute on the phone, so I, but I've unmuted you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, so right, there's three airports um, that you would be able to fly into. Denver is obviously the largest. It's about two to two and a half hours north of Pueblo. Um, Colorado Springs is really the one I would recommend. Um, a little pricier, but it's much closer. It's only um, 45 minutes away. And then we do have a local airport. Um, I'm pretty sure you would definitely have a connection in Denver if you are to fly into Pueblo. Um, and probably a little more expensive. So in terms of lodging, we have um, quite a few hotels in town. There's two or three in our downtown area that are um, pretty close to our main library um, where the conference is going to be held. So I'm planning to block um, some rooms at the Spring Hill Suites. Um, just trying to figure out probably like how many to try and block as of right now. Um, and then there are quite a few um, like VRBO houses um, within a few miles of the library. It's kind of like an older historical district. Um, so kind of just some, you know, small cute houses um, that you could definitely walk to. Um, transportation. So uh, there are rental car agencies at all three airports. Um, we do have some Ubers in Pueblo, not a lot. So I'd probably recommend the rental car. Are there any taxis? Jill? We do also have cabs, yes. And actually, they're right, the cab company is right across from the library. So, Jill, um, I, I live in Nevada, so chances are I'll probably come over in my, um, in my Westie, my Westphalia. Are there any KOAs or campgrounds that are local? Yeah, there are. Um, I'm trying to think. Pueblo West is... Um, a town that's about, mm, I want to say, 10 to 15 miles west of Pueblo, obviously. Um, there's a KOA pretty close to there. There's also one about 20 miles south of Pueblo in Colorado City. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm excited to see the library again. Last time I was yeah, there was, did. was a couple of years ago, and uh, that was a nice library, uh, nice community. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to going down to the um, to your waterway. It looks like I don't know if it's a huge aqueduct or what it is that runs through the city. Right. So we have the river walk that runs through um, downtown, and then we have the Pueblo Reservoir, um, which actually. Todd, if you wanted to camp, you could camp there as well. I didn't even think about that. But the reservoir is um, about 10 miles away, and you just have to set up a camping reservation. Um, you know, as far as uh, lodging goes, too, um, two years ago at the uh, Coeur d'Alene conference, all the people from Kansas got together and we did rent a house. We rented a vacation house for the trip. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so I, you know, recommend that if any of you guys are interested in saving money, it was actually cheaper than the hotel and it was within walking distance of the library, unlike the hotel in Coeur d'Alene, which was, uh, across the freeway, um, way out of, way out there. Um, so that would be an option, you know, if you're worried about money and you want to find a nice place to stay, it was, it was actually. Um, at least I liked it. I don't know if Jason. Uh, oh yeah, it was, it was totally cool. Yeah. It was like really retro, like an old lady's house set in the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The internet was awful. That was, that's yeah, that, was that was one. Yeah. Uh, I actually was able to, somebody else had their, uh, Wi-Fi router was open in the neighborhood. And so I used their, I stole Wi-Fi from one of the neighbors. Uh, but that's something to think about though if you're uh if you're headed out that way it was you know if you get four or five people together to rent like a, that was like a four bedroom house it was it was perfect for us so right and we also have a bed and breakfast it's called the rusted poppy um and that is really really close to the library um, i'm not quite sure how many rooms it has but i think it runs about 130 a night so that might be something um to check into as well. Well, now I'm interested in seeing Todd's camper because I picture him hanging out at the KOA in his VW van looking like the Freedom Rock commercial from the 1980s. You know, the bunch of guys sitting around listening to Eric Clapton. Uh, you pretty much pinged it, George. <laughs> <laughs> Making moonshine and smoking dope. Yeah. Hey, it's legal there. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It is perfectly legal, and there are quite a few dispensaries around the library. You can't judge people. As long as you oh. don't do it in the library. <laughs> I always wanted a VW bus, but... <laughs> yeah, it's very stereotypical. I'm, 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 really, I'm a rather plain camper. I just like driving around in my Westie and having some fun taking the family and doing different things in it, so... I like uh, cooking out, taking the dogs, and popping the top, and just enjoying the scenery. Hopefully, there's some good woods. Cool. Load stuff into the van and drive to where the trees look different. That's what I like. Uh, one thing else about the conference? Any other questions people have? Any anything else we can say? Uh, we're uh, one of the things the conference committee has already talked about is. Um, not calling the last two days hack fest we're going to call it workshop days to make it sound less intimidating um but in addition to conference in addition to proposals for presentations i think uh there's also uh the draft of the form has places for talking about uh uh round tables round tables that's the word i was looking for uh, so round tables, you know, panel discussions. If you want to lead a workshop on one of the workshop days, uh, maybe that'd be a great time for the acquisitions people to, to, you know, show off how to use acquisitions for those of us that don't use it, things like that. Um, so hopefully if we call it Hackfest, we won't get the, like, you know, major drop in attendance on the third and the fourth day like we've gotten in the past, so. Hey George, I'm just curious. I didn't see Rhonda in here when we um, we had uh, open some kind of open time and announcements, and I wanted to hear more about um, about the acquisitions group. And I'm just wondering if we can allow her time to speak on that. Since I don't think that's a problem. Okay, cool. Okay, yeah, I had another meeting, and I've got another one here shortly. So, um, yeah, we had our first acquisitions group meeting um, the end of last month had like 35 people interested. I, um, I think George suggested that I posted out on um, the listserv and got all kinds of responses from that. Um, it, people were very interested in learning from each other about acquisitions. Um, people had lots of questions. We're, we're going to meet every other month. Um, and just to talk and then um, with Margaret's help, I set up a Google group that 
people can ask questions in the meantime. Um, and so we've had, um, I forget, three or four, you know, people asking, you know, how, how does everybody do this? Or how does, how do people do that? So um, I think it'll be a little bit, you know, might take a little bit for people to get comfortable and get to know each other. And, and um, I, that's what I'm hoping is people will get to know each other, become familiar um, with, with each other and the different, you know, who else is in my situation, public library, you know, using EDI or whatever. Um, but there seemed to be a, a lot of interest in, in some kind of group like this. And um, kind of one of the goals that we have is to come up with um, maybe some developments that we can present to this group um, for um, acquisitions. And um, I don't know, that's, that's like the nutshell of what happened. If you've got any questions specifically, I'd be happy to answer them. How long was the meeting, Rhonda? Were you surprised that it go longer than you thought it would? It went the full hour that I had set aside. Um, and it was kind of, it, well, it actually went over a little bit. Um, and yeah, people were curious. They, and the, the software or whatever that I use for the group is, you know, the city of Round Rock has Skype for business. And so I hadn't figured out how to allow people to call in with that software. So I think if we had that ability, cause we were like chatting back and forth and, and it was kind of clunky that way. I think if, if we had um, the ability for people to actually call in, it would be a much better experience for people. Um, but I was, I was really, I don't know. It's kind of one of those, like, um, it's cool that everybody is all excited about this. Um, I just, you know, some of the questions that were asked, I was like, wow, I wish I would have known that question earlier because I could have helped, you know, much earlier because it seemed like people were struggling, you know, with this is just, you know, one of the questions was how do you, how do you um, do a blanket PO, you know, something where you don't want to enter all the individual items. And, you know, we had had a Bywater show us how to do that early on. And, you know, I was like, oh yeah, you know, here's, I, I created a Word document, stuck it out on, on the in the Google group so that people can use that, and I got lots of you know good feedback from that too. So I I think if it's it's going to be a really good way to help people learn and to also realize that I'm not the only one struggling with this problem. You know, there's certain things that are problems in Koha that Koha just doesn't have the functionality for. And, you know, sometimes you just think, oh, I'm alone. I'm the only one that really wants this function. But as you start to talk to other people, you realize, oh, no, everybody does want this function. You know, the ability to um, <coughs> um, track changes in, in a budget during the year, you know, like the amount of a budget for, you know, like the examples given were memorials you know, that can go up and down um, during the year as more donations come in or whatever, you know, a, bill, a, a way to track that in Koha. Um, I think a lot of people were interested in that and didn't realize it. You know, there is a plugin for donations that was, um, it was created by a guy who lives down in Southeast Florida. He works at a museum down there. He's a volunteer and I've tried to contact him because I want to get more information on it. And Kyle thinks that he may be picking up support on that, but the gentleman is very, um, he hasn't been responsive to me and I've sent him a couple emails. Oh, okay. There, okay. Is, a, there is a plug in and uh, I guess you can pull reports on it so you can see the donations and things that, you know, have happened throughout a period of time. Okay. I'll talk to Kyle and I'll send him another email and see if I can get him to communicate with me. Okay. Cause that was something specifically people were asking about, um, you know, tracking, tracking the, I don't know, the budget amount, you know, for something. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's a plugin. If you went to the GitHub, you'd be able to find it in there. Um, it's for okay. them. So, yeah. Um, if you put a ticket in for that, it might even push the issue. It might make um, Kyle have to, you know, really consider if he wants to take that under his belt and start supporting it and get into the code and stuff. So 
Yeah, there is one bug out there um, that's related, you know, it just talks about tracking the amounts of, of a budget. And so somebody found it, it's like three years old in, in discussion status. Um, so they were encouraging people to vote, you know, to, to say, hey, I want this on there. You know, this is something I'm interested in. So um, we started doing that. Um, so there is, there is one bug out there. It, it, I think it was 2016, um, the last time something had happened on it. These, this working group um, sounds like a really good idea. I know we have our different committees within Coha US, but just hearing you know what you've been able to do, and even with the single meeting that you've had so far with acquisitions, it makes me wonder if it isn't something more that we should try to spur on here at Coha US and create different working groups. Well, that's what I was about to say. If there's anything that we can do to help this group, uh, let us know. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we can. Uh, well, well, we can talk about it, you know, at our next meeting and see, you know, if there's anything that, you know, because I'm hoping that we can work with you with this group, you know, and kind of be, you know, my my vision or whatever is kind of be an extension of the Koha US, be a, like a subgroup or something underneath it. Um, right. And I think that would, you know, we can direct people to each other and, um, you know, work on developments with each other and that kind of thing. Um, so that was kind of my thought. That's a good thought. The, Thank you, Ron. If we're kind of done with conference discussion and with that sidebar there, the next thing on the list here is grant writers wanted. I'm guessing that has something to do with the fundraising committee. Yes, it does. Um, thanks for getting that in there, Jason. Uh, if anybody has any experience with, with um, grant writing, we have access to GrantStation. Um, we can give you access as well. Lisette, did you see that I got that issue resolved with, um, okay. And uh, we're trying to find a grant that can fit um, our scope here at Koha US, which falls mostly under education as well as developments. Um, but we need creative thinkers. I mean, right now we're kind of limited in education and development. If you guys have a really cool idea on how we might be able to fit uh, a particular grant, if there are grants out there that, um, that we can fit within the criteria, it'd be fantastic. And if you have, if you have experience um, writing an executive summary, a letter of um, inquiry, if you have experience, um, you know, the smart setup for grants, uh, I can't, it's an acronym and I, I'm all new, I'm new to this so I'm just kind of piecing this thing together but if um, if you have interest that'd be fantastic right now we've got we show and reflect that we have five people in our agenda but in all actuality there's three people there's Lisette there's um, John and myself and uh, three people busy schedules trying to put together a grant it, it really takes a team so um, if you're interested and you want to learn about grants and you want to participate if you're a creative writer and a, a creative thinker and you know some really cool words that can help spur on um, people's interests um, you know when you're writing something please um, we'd love to have you I have the best words but I'm not interested in sharing them show me the money Okay, the next thing on the list here is conference committee. I think we probably covered everything there. So Lizette's nodding. Uh, between the other two times we've talked about the conference, I think we've got that wrapped up. Uh, development committee. So we are still waiting for two proposals um, we needed more information from, and they were waiting, you know, they had to get quotes for us and uh, haven't heard back yet, as far as I know. And so we're still kind of waiting on that, that, but we've got the form pretty much ready to go as soon as we get those last two quotes for them. Yeah, I'm still waiting to hear. Uh, maybe I should follow up. Sounds good. 
Let's see. And then that's really most of what's been going on with the development committee. We have talked a little bit about um, a couple other things. Um, but right now, like our big thing is trying to get the the last information from the proposals so we can get to voting on that. Okay. You want to jump on into the education? Thing? Sounds good. So we're, uh, we're still working on updating the website and putting more educational resources on there and trying to think of what other educational resources are out there that we can link to on our website so that um, people can find what they're looking for with Koha educational resources. Seth, did you want to talk any about the, um, still the thoughts about bar charts or anything that we can add to? Yeah, so we've looked into, um, I don't know if you guys know about bar charts. I don't remember if we've talked about this at a general meeting yet. Um, yes, we have. Yes, we have. Um, so we're, you know, thinking about if making one of those for like Koha specific things, Koha reports, that kind of thing could be useful. That's one thing that we've been talking about. I don't know if everybody knows what a bar chart is, but um, it's, it's uh, you can have them in a single document, front, back, front and back. Fred's got one, you can see right there. Just gives um, quick detailed information um, in blocked off spaces so you can refer to something very quickly. Like if you were gonna, if you're, it looks like Christopher might have added something here. Um, if you want to put a, uh, if you want to do something, let's say for Linux, you know, if you're working, um, and you want to do something with command line, if you want to know what the different easy commands are to be able to move from a folder, how to create a directory, how to create a document, how to make an edit. People hear about BI, they hear about them, but they don't know what these things are, and then how to use them. And that's what it does. It breaks it down, and it'll put it in different sections. You might have one for command line. You might have another one for user interface. Um, you know, just different types of details. So we would do that for Koha US. And maybe it could be something on circulation. It could be another one on acquisitions. It could be another one in reports. It could be, and then you would have this document, if it's a single document or if it's a bifold or trifold, whatever it might be with these different pages. Um, once we had that assembled, we'd be able to uh, put that as a document that people can download um, and use. And one other thing we've talked about, I just put in the chat, is Explain Shell. Someone brought it up at our last meeting, and it's pretty handy if you are trying to look up, you know, what a what a certain command does. You know, you want like the help information for it. You can just put it in here, and it can. Um, if you're trying to do something in a command line, like in Koha Dev Box or something, so um, that's a a helpful resource that we talked about last time. Okay, this may sound a little strange, but hey, we're all librarians. Um, how about a Koa t-shirt with some of the most common commands printed on the front upside down? <laughs> so you can look down at your shirt. Yeah. And <laughs> Sounds silly, but I'd certainly buy one. That actually sounds like a pretty good idea. Here, 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 here. Pretty good one for acquisitions or cataloging or. <laughs> I'm aware would definitely understand why it would be upside down too. That's pretty funny, Fred. I like that. You could do like useful report snippets too. I can picture myself wearing that shirt backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Todd, do you want to talk about fundraising since you're the, the new chair? Well, you know, I've come totally unprepared since I just found out today that I'm actually the, well, I guess I found out last week, but it wasn't brought to me by yeah. the But since the president of um, Koha US is here and he has now ordained me as the um, official. Oh, sure. Maggie. Um, yeah. Uh, same thing I was saying earlier. We'd really like to have some um, some grant writers. I had an idea, and I was thinking, wouldn't it be fun if you know to try to get people to start thinking outside of the box? Um, if there was something we could do at Koha US to send out to the email list that we currently have, and as we're developing that and refining it, um, send out to everybody to have like a ten dollar um, fund drive 
And just to get libraries to look at it, and of course, um, you know, I, I come from a library, and I know what happens when you get that kind of stuff. You get those things and faxes all the time. You get um, different things that they're asking for from different organizations, and it usually goes in the round file. Um, the thing is, it's a low-hanging dollar amount. Um, it's something that anybody can do, and if we let them know that, give them ideas. Let them know that, you know, even if they're able to, if they don't want to get it, uh, put it together from their patronage, if they want to do it with staff members, and if um, if they, sorry, I just had a little text here, I had to read, um, if they go to staff members, and if they just, you know, find $10, they can go to a store, and they can put it on a credit card, they can buy those little credit cards for $10 or $25, and they can enter that into PayPal. You know, just trying to get people to think outside of the box. Most folks, they think, well, I don't have a line item for that in my budget, so I can't do $10. Well, everybody can do $10. Heck, it's not that big of a deal. You can collect change, you know? I mean, after somebody gets a coffee, you can throw it into a cup. By the time you have 15 bucks, you can walk over, and it might take time, but I mean, I worked in a library where they took time to go out and get donuts. So, you know, you throw the money in a can, we're going to go get donuts. Who's going to do it? We volunteer you. So if somebody picks a volunteer in a library um, on the way home, you know, just little ideas like that. But try to get people thinking that, yeah, this is possible. We can do it. We can contribute. And I thought, even if we had, you know, it's going to be a low number in the beginning. But eventually, if we grew into, you know, if we could do a little fun drive, we did that semi-annually, um, get people to... Uh, you know, to um, find a way, and and if they would contribute that, I mean, ten times a thousand dollars, you can see where that could go to education and development quickly, and hopefully it would um, work and coincide with membership drives and so forth, and it would you know help people to see that there is quite a bit that's going on here, and you know it is low hanging fruit, it is low dollar amount, and uh, you know we'll start to bring the bang for the buck here. So just you know just a couple thoughts, but. Um, getting back to grant writing, um, we're looking for volunteers. Just come on board. That's it. All right, trying to find the unmute, unmute button. If that's it from fundraising, then John, it's your turn. Jason has provided a link to the latest finance committee report. It's a boring month. Uh, most of our income is still coming from memberships of various types. I will note we received a very generous $500 individual donation. And if you're actually taking a look at the Finance Committee report, that is reflected in the PayPal balance uh, at the end of March. You'll notice the organization looks flush with cash, and that's because right now it is. But keep in mind that about $1,900 of that bank balance is actually money uh, that is slated for the development and educational initiatives of the organization as identified in the 2018 annual report uh, and the allocation of that in uh, that report as well. We're doing very well on membership, like I mentioned before. Um, there's really only one other thing to talk about, and that is I've only received one person who's volunteered to serve as an auditor for the organization's records for last year. So I will begin work with that person. Um, having served as an auditor of a nonprofit's books before, I've always done it in person. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get this to work in a virtual scenario, other than maybe trying to set up something with a Google Hangout or uh, some such like that. I hope to have all of that work with regard to the audit as well as a statement from our single auditor ready for the board by the end of May. We're in federal compliance with the filing of the Form 990N, so we're all set through the end of calendar year 2019 for that. I have yet to file the State of Kansas report, mostly because that requires a $40 filing fee, and I keep on leaving the debit card for the organization at home, <laughs> locked away whenever I have to think about the fact that I really need to get that started. Writing these um, the, and filing these forms is actually a very easy uh, task because of the record, the record keeping is already done for that. It doesn't really take much time. I just have to remember to put the debit card in my wallet so that I can go ahead and actually get the report filed. We've got until June 15th to do that, so it's not like we're running up against some deadline 
that in five days for the rest of the country and individuals for those filing uh, their U.S. income taxes. So that's it from finance. We're looking good. Next month will be a bigger report. It will represent and talk about the first quarter of calendar year 2019. So it'll be a little bit more detailed and, and have a breakdown of our uh, very small expenses in our income year to date. Cool. Good report as always. Thanks, John. Thank you. I think that takes us on to open discussion, bugs, issues, et cetera. Um, I did, um, when uh, Rhonda was talking, I went over and I found the bug that she was talking about with uh, uh, the acquisitions bug she was talking about. And so I just posted that in the chat box. So that's one. Uh, it sounds like everybody in acquisitions would be interested in having us all go over there and say, yeah, why don't we fix this? Yes, I think that's true. Um, I'm not sure if anybody else has any bugs they want to talk about, if there's any issues going on. Um, well, we're updating tonight to 1811. So we'll probably have issues, you know, tomorrow to talk about. <laughs> but um, no, 1811 .03 is where we're getting updated to. Is that, is that production or test? Production, because we're one of the early adopters. So um, we're looking forward to that. Um, and especially the addition of the stock rotation for Koha, which is, I'm putting the link in the chat there. Um, though we'll have to do some testing because um, uh, Martin was pretty sure it worked a certain way, but um, the code makes it think look to me, like it might work a different way. So we're gonna have to do some testing before we can start working on that. But um, being a district within a uh, larger consortium, we try to do like rotation of our, especially our media pretty regularly to all our branches. And so there's this uh, new stock rotation in Co for Koha that hopefully will help simplify that process for us quite a bit. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that, seeing how that works too. I don't have as many libraries like you do in that situation, but we have one here that could benefit from that a lot. So there was one bug, our test server has already been updated to 1811 and I can't find the bug number for it, um, but I don't know how many people it affects. Um, on the reports page in Koha, there is the space at the bottom of the page where you can put HTML. And uh, that's broken in some versions of 18.11. The HTML doesn't render as HTML. It just looks like it, it's just the, the raw HTML. Um, but I think that's been fixed, but I don't think it's fixed in 18.11.03. I think it's 18.11.05 it's fixed. Uh, but I'm not sure if anybody is using that other than other than Knuckles. Was there talk about backporting that to 18.11.03? Are you guys, are you getting, are you an early adopter? We are not an early, our test server is an early adopter. Um, the rest of us aren't because policy, uh, our policies for the shared catalog are that uh, we do two weeks of training uh, for staff before we before we uh, do any upgrades. And so you know, I'll, I'll do the bywater training and figure out what I need to train everybody on. Then I'll actually go out and train them because we, we do at least three trainings and two of them are outside of this office. So um, it's, it's almost like bywater has got us set up to where we can never be an early adopter. Uh, uh, we just we just have built in our system that you know we've got 54 libraries to train we try to try to make sure that we do all the training before the yeah. before the upgrade and then adding this wrinkle into it where i've promised everybody that we'll do at least two trainings not in lawrence um adds a layer of complexity to everything sure 
Um, I've got a question. It's um, it's 90 degrees out, but uh, John, I'm curious, what would it take to get a DUNS or SAM number for our organization, or do we already have them? The most important number we have is the yeah, yeah. Federal Employee Identification Number, and that was actually assigned way back in 2016 when Robin Hastings filed the paperwork with the Internal Revenue Service, at which point in time we were officially classified as a 501c3. I'd have to do a little bit of research. I'm not sure that nonprofit organizations qualify for DUNS numbers or not. I'd have to do a little bit of looking into that. It's one of the things in, in some of the grants that I'm looking at and, and some of the training that I've gone through is they recommend that you have your SAMS number current, which is associated with the DUN. So I'm thinking that it should. And um, it looks like it doesn't, it's not going to be a cost, but it's going to be some work just submitting the paperwork and so forth to, to get it in. So I'll do a little bit of looking and uh, see what I can find up, uh, find out about that. Thank you, sir. Well, nobody else has any bugs they want to talk about? I'm um, surprised. I just posted a thing I made in the in the chat. We've, we've run into this issue, and I know other libraries probably have too, with the recent Firefox upgrade. It's treating sounds like pop-ups now, so they're automatically blocked. Um, so I made a cheat sheet for my people um, that tries to simplify the process of turning those back on. Uh, so I posted that. We've encountered the same problem here, but I didn't. I wasn't thinking of it as a co-op problem. I was thinking it was a Firefox problem. It is a Firefox problem, but um, yeah. you can exclude your Koha URL from the. You, you can yeah. make an exception, just like pop up. So, my brain's on Koha right now, not on Firefox. That's why it didn't occur to me. But yes, we've had several libraries that have had the same thing. They, I get these panic calls saying. Uh, the, my first encounter with it was I got this. Uh, panic call saying the sounds don't work, the sounds don't work, but they work on this other computer, but not this one. And then I tested it on mine and, and everything was fine uh, because I hadn't upgraded Firefox yet. So it took a couple of days for us to even figure out what was going on. Um, any other bugs or weird things? Uh, Going on. Wow, we got four minutes left. Come on, we never finish early. <laughs> Quiet group today. Yeah. And Fred's even here. <laughs> I guess I, found I just unmuted myself. <clears throat> I found a weird bug or came up with a weird bug yesterday. Um, one of my libraries couldn't search for her lists in the list like table on the list page. Um, it, it would fail out at processing. And we found that one of her reports had a space in, at the very end of the title. And for some reason that like completely killed the searching. So if she typed in her name, it wouldn't bring it up. If she typed in the title of that list, it wouldn't bring it up. But when we got rid of the space at the end, that trailing space, um, it fixed it. So I was gonna, test that out on master and then file a bug report if it's still there. It may be like a wider data tables issue. I'm not sure. Huh. I don't think I've ever encountered that. So it was really weird and random. Yeah. Okay. This has nothing to do with Koa, but all does I'm going to find it kind of hard to follow up on email to developers because my computer has been infected with malware to, so that Outlook has slowed way, way, way down. Uh, I know what the malware is. It's Office 365. Quickly identified that, huh, Fred? Oh, yeah. But well. yeah. Each message takes two or three seconds to come up, and when, when you have 100 messages. Um, I, I really liked listening to what Rhonda had to say about the acquisitions group meeting, and I, I think what she's suggesting in creating um, subgroups within Kohai US, and you know maybe seeing if there's interest, if people bring those to us. I don't know if um, it would be necessary to go out 
in uh, in a mailing, and maybe that'd be another way to spur on interest in membership. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I just think that's a really good idea. I, I think what they were able to accomplish, even you know, just pulling thirty five people together to discuss acquisitions that's I think that's what you know we're really all about having these meetings is great and trying to pull members in and have discussions but you know having those side group meetings where people can talk more about Koha and what what their use is and, and maybe what's impeding them or, or what's helping them to, um, you know to uh, to accomplish their tasks and um, and surfacing that and sharing it with everybody I think that's that's really in line with who we are and, and what we want to offer and what we want to bring to the community. So I, I think we should think about how we can promote that and, and develop it. Cool. Well, it's 1130. Should we call this to a close? Here, here. All Let's right. Go. Good meeting everybody. Thanks for coming. Yeah, Bye, everyone. We'll see you all next month. See you and next month. be sure to figure out what you're going to propose for your conference presentation. Everybody <laughs> that's here today, they have to do a presentation. So at least one. <laughs> see you. Bye. All right. See you all later. Actually, I've got one planned. Two planned, Fred. You forgot. No, I didn't. Two planned. <laughs>